Garland and this is Buckingham News. David Cameron recently announced that the UK would accept 20,000 Syrian refugees over the next five years and Buckinghamshire is ready to welcome those individuals desperately fleeing war. But, according to leader of Bucks County Council, Martin Tett, the government must pay towards the significant impact they will have on public services. Alex de Brown investigates what this might mean for the county. The estimation made by Buckinghamshire County Council is that nine-tenths of services likely to be accessed by refugees fall under the county's remit. Bucks County Council will support the government and do recognise the refugees who endured terrible suffering, but although they want to support them, they do need the resources. As it stands currently, the government will only give funding towards the first year of a refugee's stay, which Mr Tett says was not enough. As far as we're concerned in Buckinghamshire, we want to do what we can to try and help people most directly affected by war situations. But this is a classic case where we have to act with both our heart and our heads. Um, if we look at the numbers involved, uh, potentially you can be talking about not a few thousand, but potentially not just even hundreds of thousands, but tens of millions. So it's not just a question of somebody saying, oh, I can offer a refugee a home in my house for you know, a couple of weeks. That really isn't what's required. What's essential is that they have uh, good accommodation um, and then access to a whole range of services that local government provides. It is not yet known how refugees will be shared throughout the country, whether there will be a quota imposed on councils or whether the scheme will be voluntary. Uh, so what we're asking the government to do at the moment is uh, we will work with them to help bring people to the UK, but what we think is essential is that the government provides the funding to enable us to provide the right services to support refugees um, and make sure that their arrival in the UK is a successful one. On the 5th of October, Buckingham Town Council unanimously agreed to committing to work with all local people and public service partners to make refugees welcome in Buckingham. And I think it's important as a town council that we say as local leaders, we're not the only leaders of the town, but we are as the council, one of the local, you know, a set of local leaders in the town, that we say, we think it's really important that we offer a welcoming hand to people who are in need of, of, of help and support. And I think it's important that the town and its council that represents the town says, hello, you're welcome here. Some universities in the UK have offered scholarships to refugees fleeing the crisis in Syria. Buckingham News contacted Deputy Vice-Chancellor Alistair Alcock to see what the University of Buckingham could do to accommodate. In a statement to Buckingham News, he said that there is a problem for Buckingham. The government does not cover all the tuition fees as it does for other universities. We are looking at the issue, but are aware that we have many other hardship claims against our limited resources. It seems like opinion is split between town and county level, with Buckingham's residences caught in the middle of this growing humanitarian crisis. This is Alex de Brown for Buckingham News. The University of Buckingham's Department of Applied Computing has been playing a major role in the creation of authentication technology. Recently, the university was given an extra grant by the Knowledge Transfer Partnership to continue its important research. Queenie Sheikh has the story. The University of Buckingham's Department of Applied Computing has been granted Knowledge Transfer Partnership funding, which comes jointly from Innovate UK and Bletchley Park-based information security company, DeepNet Security. The university will receive £120,000 for research into biometrics authentication to secure online mobile transactions. The university have joined with DeepNet Security to create a convenient, reliable authentication tool based on signatures by hand to protect personal information on mobile devices from unauthorized access. This project is funded by the government okay. Okay. and it is a 60-40% split on the only supporting the, the cost of the project. And this particular KTP project is about developing a very sophisticated uh, face recognition system mm -hmm. for the local company called the DeepNet Security. We've been doing research in the area of biometrics for many years in this department. So uh, now in this project we are transferring that knowledge into company to build a product that can be used by their customers, by the company's customer, to securely authenticate. Smartphone or tablet users will be able to draw their signatures using their fingers, giving businesses a new authentication platform. Buckingham University expresses excitement for the partnership and hopes that this research will be able to bring Buckingham's research in biometrics to commercial production.
This is Queenie Shake for Buckingham News. Two boys were killed by car accidents on Aylesbury and Buckingham's roads over the space of a single weekend. Buckingham's tied roads are known to be inconvenient, but as of yet not fatal. If Buckingham is such a safe place to live, why has there been a rise in road deaths? Karen Eogway has the story. In the past two weeks, Buckingham's roads have seen the tragic deaths of two teenage boys. The first was a 16-year-old at around 9.50 p.m. on Saturday 3rd of October. The second was 13-year-old Jeremy Terms, who was a student at Fremantle School. Buckingham's population has doubled over the last couple of years, but its slim roads and roundabouts remain the same. Buckingham has many hotspots for car accidents, two of which have been labelled as serious and one has even been labelled as fatal. Police have confirmed that an arrest has been made on suspicion of causing death by dangerous driving. Buckingham's roads may not see a change anytime soon. All pedestrians can do is keep their eyes open and remain safe on the roads. This is Karen Yogwe, Buckingham News. In other news, the University of Buckingham's Welfare Department recently sent an email advertising sexual health screening at the North End Surgery in Buckingham. Students may request an appointment between 3 and 6 on Thursdays and on Fridays between 11 and 2. At the clinic, students may get sexual health advice, information about contraceptive methods and testing and treatment for STIs. The County Council, in collaboration with Thames Valley Police, launched a new campaign to support domestic abuse victims in the LGBT community. LGBT people are encouraged to seek support if they are suffering from psychological or physical abuse. We really want to make sure that people uh, don't become victims of domestic violence, so we're trying to reach out now to, to the uh, lesbian gay community and tell them that we do want to listen to their problems, we do want to deal if they're suffering from abuse, we want to know about it and we will do something about it. If you get straight in touch with the Thames Valley Police, there's a specialist officer who deals with the uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender community and they will get a proper hearing and they will be listened to and respected and we will deal with any problems they have. The University of Buckingham Student Union have made good on their plans to put suggestion boxes around the university to allow students to voice their concerns about the runnings of the Student Union. The suggestion boxes are located in the OTM, near the refectory, as well as in the Chandos Road building and in the Franciscan. The Student Union plans to empty the bins weekly, and students can expect to receive a response promptly. Dementia is a crippling illness that can ruin the lives of sufferers and their families. As the world becomes more complex, some communities, including Buckingham, are trying their best to make their towns dementia-friendly areas. Shawane Tan has the story. 850,000 people in the United Kingdom suffer with dementia and it's estimated that by 2025, that number will increase to 1 million. Dementia is a chronic disorder of mental processes caused by brain disease and marked by memory disorders, personality changes and impaired reasoning. In recent months, Station Commander Baxter and Red Watch Buckingham have been working with dementia-friendly community manager for Bucks County Council to make Buckingham a dementia-friendly community. Station Commander Baxter and Red Watch Buckingham are all undergoing training to become dementia friends and some are even volunteering to receive additional training to become dementia champions which will allow them to cascade training to community groups and local businesses. So we're appealing to our local community, business owners, shop owners, managers uh, as we approach them in, over the coming months to support this initiative and allow your staff to come along to the station, receive the training and prepare them better for their customers that may have dementia in the future. Dementia friendly communities are villages, towns and cities where most people understand dementia. There's less fear and avoidance and people living with dementia are included and supported to live independently for longer. With the help and support of local communities, mitigating the effects of an ageing population, schemes like Dementia Friends are more than just born out of goodwill. They are a real mechanism for maintaining a healthy life for thousands of sufferers across the country. This is Shawain Tan, reporting for Buckingham News. And now over to sports with Adidion Frank. Thank you, Paul. 
This weekend hosts at the sixth match of the season for the University of Buckingham football team against Padbury Village. Would it provide a chance for the team to end their losing streak within the league? Cameron Hortru went along to find out. Buckingham's latest match was against Padbury Village. The game kicked off at a fairly slow pace with most of the possession remaining in the middle of the pitch. Despite this, Padbury Village netted an early goal in the fourth minute of the game. Throughout the game, Buckingham only managed to have six shots whilst the opposition took control, having 14 shots in total. Charlie Parry had a very close attempt on goal, almost managing to lob the goalkeeper in the top corner. It was an aggressive game with a lot of disputes between mainly opposition players and the referee. There was a total of 11 fouls in the match. Buckingham were unable to score, but they did well to defend and ensure only two goals were conceded. The second goal came at 24 minutes with a fantastic direct free kick from the opposition. It seems Buckingham are unable to break their current losing streak. With another game next weekend and a training session on Wednesday, they will be hoping to come back and finally start winning again. This is Cameron Hawtrey, Buckingham News. Just two months ago, Buckingham News reported that the badminton society was being forced into dormancy by a lack of participation. It looks, however, like a September influx of willing members has revitalised the club. Owen Hughes went to see them in action. The most oversubscribed society at the university was forced into dormancy in August, but the badminton club is back and looking for students to come and get involved. The session is open to all students who want to join the badminton club. People of all skill levels are invited to come and train and get a feel for the sport. As with all the sports now at the university, they have to be student-led, so we do need students to step up, take on the responsibilities for helping develop, manage and coordinate the club activities. Buckingham News' very own Paul Rutland, also a Level 2 qualified badminton coach and soon-to-be society president, welcomed the return of the badminton club. Badminton by nature is quite a sociable sport. It's the second most played sport in the world, so that many people can't be wrong. It's quite an enjoyable thing to do, and I hope to, to be able to bring a little bit more of that to Buckingham. These ongoing sessions run for two more weeks, so if you're interested in playing for leisure or to compete, sign up at the sports office. This is Owen Hughes for Buckingham News. And now, back to the studio. October the 18th is No Beard Day, a day designed to prepare people for the perils of November. The day encourages men to have a good old shave and get rid of the fluff. Caspian Chalice, ever on the cutting edge, investigates how the people of Buckingham feel about their facial attire. No Beard Day came about as an act prior to Movember, a movement which encourages men to grow beards during November in support of prostate cancer. No Beard Day suggests that a clean shave is just the thing before a month-long commitment to facial hair. Some people, they scare from the very long period, but nowadays so many people, they, they like it. They like it, they fashion. And depending how well kept or not they are, they can make me pleased or unpleased. <laughs> yeah, it goes, but the one that gets too long, it makes, it makes me a I quite I like them if they're trimmed. I can't go with this. I can't get that fan away. I can't down there. That's not my sort of thing. Uh, I'm not a beard. I wish I was though. So, whether you prefer a thick winter fuzz or a clean shave, you can show your support for the Movember team at www.movember.co.uk or grow your own beard. This is Caspian Chalice for Buckingham News. Bake Off fever continues to grip the country, even if the programme ended weeks ago and we've been thoroughly overcome. As it's National Cupcake Week, and because we couldn't keep her away, Olivia Marsden unleashed her inner Mary Berry with some velvet chocolate cupcakes. With it being National Cupcake Week, what better excuse is there than to make a dozen delicious chocolate velvet cupcakes? But remember, the chocolate is for baking, not for eating. You will need 12 cupcake cases, 175 millilitres of milk, 125 grams of caster sugar, 150 grams of self-raising flour, 100 grams of 70% dark chocolate, one large free-range egg, half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, 60 grams of softened, unsalted butter. For the chocolate frosting, you'll need one rounded tablespoon of golden syrup, 100 grams of dark chocolate, 70%, 50 grams of unsalted butter. Preheat the oven to 180 degrees Celsius, 160 for a fan or gas mark four. Chop the chocolate up into small squares and add to the pan. Take one third of the sugar and add that to the chocolate. Then pour in the milk. Set over the lowest possible heat and leave until melted and smooth, stirring frequently. 
Put the butter into a mixing bowl and beat it until creamy with a wooden spoon. Add the remaining of the sugar and the vanilla extract and beat thoroughly for about four minutes or until the mixture is very light and fluffy. Crack an egg and beat it. Then gradually add it, beating well after each addition. Mix, mix, mix! Fold in the flour in three batches alternately with the chocolate liquid. When completely mixed and creamy, spoon the mixture into the paper cases so they are evenly filled. Then pop into the oven and bake for 15 to 20 minutes. As the cakes are baking, try your hardest not to eat the remaining chocolate. Now onto the frosting. Gently boil some water in a pan. Put the chocolate, golden syrup and butter into a heat proof bowl. As soon as the mixture is smooth, remove the bowl from the pan and cool. Remove the tray from the oven and leave to cool. Don't they look yummy? When cooled, put the frosting on the cakes. Choose any decorations you like and then leave to set. Place the cupcakes on a plate and voila, cupcake heaven. So there we have it. I'm all set to celebrate National Cupcake Week with these 12 delicious cupcakes to enjoy, all by myself. This is Liv Marsden reporting for Buckingham News. Lollipops, teddy bears and fun fair games, who doesn't love them? The Charter Fair rocked into town last weekend and people young and old gathered in excitement. Here are the best bits we filmed to show you the joys of this annual event.